I think social media is really something that we can't escape and it's pretty much all around us and kids are engaging with it to a certain extent. So it's good really to be prepared and to help guide our kids through it. So like um, Sidi Harun said, we also in our family um, did not, our, our sons did not have smartphones in high school, which, you know, they, it, it was an agreement, an understanding that we had and uh, one of my sons said that in high school, people used to be amazed by his flip phone because they didn't even know those existed anymore. They would take pictures of his flip phone. But when they graduated from high school, they got an iPhone. That was like our graduation gift to them. So it wasn't something forever. They knew that eventually it was coming. But through the high school years, they didn't have a smartphone. My youngest is in, in high school now, and he still doesn't have a smartphone. He has an old smartphone that, that is at home you know, on which he can WhatsApp with relatives, with the cousins, but it doesn't have Wi-Fi access when he leaves the home. Um, once my, our sons did get smartphones and they were on social media, we had a discussion about it. And one of the understandings we had in the beginning, and this is not the case anymore, my older two are in college, they're independent, I, we, we trust them to know the difference between right and wrong, inshallah. But in the beginning, when they first started out on social media, the understanding was that because we were paying for their phones, and it was because we were paying for it that they had access to this technology, that they had to um, agree to friend their mother on social media. <laughs> and um, also uh, to, to respect my husband isn't that much on social media. I was on it more, but the understanding I had with my sons, and they agreed to it before they decided they were going to take on social media. I, I, we told them you can choose one at the time, and they both decided to go for Instagram over Facebook. And um, they agreed that if there was something that I didn't approve of, of what they were posting or what they were clicking like on, that they would respect. Uh, their their mother's opinion on that topic. So, and then helping them figure it out because like when you're first getting on social media, especially with young men, um, you know, clicking like on a girl's selfie, they may think they're just being nice that, okay, somebody posted a selfie, so I'm just going to click like. But then we would talk about the deeper layered discussion behind that, that, well, what does it mean to click like on a girl's self-portrait? Right? Like, would you be staring at a girl's face in real life and going, you know, I like the way you look? Or would you look away and have modesty? And is it appropriate? And also, if any of their friends were posting about haram things, like friends from high school, if they're posting about getting drunk, or if people are posting pictures of themselves dressed really inappropriately, is that something you want to be taking in on a daily basis? That becomes your suhba, that becomes your companionship. So having discussions about it at a spiritual level and getting them to think about how these things affect them. But like I said, um, my youngest is not on social media. My older two do have Instagram and Snapchat. Um, and we are not now monitoring how they use it. It's, they're, they're independent. But in the beginning, when they first started, like right after they graduated from high school, yeah, there was oversight on our part. So one of my sons uh, was here actually at MCC, and uh, one of the uncles in the community approached him, and he said, I just recently became a parent, and I tell me something that your parents did with you guys that you think was really, really beneficial. And my son was like, I don't know, I'm just a kid. Go ask my parents, they're the ones again. And he was like, no, 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 I want to hear from the kid's perspective, honestly. Just tell me the truth. What do you think was one of the most beneficial things that your parents did for you while you were growing up? And this uncle told me, the, the young dad told me, that my son um, told him that, honestly, it was not allowing us to have internet-enabled devices in the privacy of our bedrooms. So that was probably the most beneficial thing that they did because I've actually personally witnessed what's going on with some of the people in my generation. The addictions and the problems that they're suffering that their parents don't even know about. So I thought, you know, it's interesting because at the time it might be painful and it might, it's not fun and you might be the bad guy. But inshallah, inshallah, 
uh, one day your kids will thank you and hopefully you know they're going to have all other issues they're going to be dealing with with their own children but they're going to see that you sometimes have to go against the grain of what everybody else is doing. The other quick comment I, comment I wanted to make was I wrote an article called How to Protect Your Children from the P-Word. I think, I think that was the name of the article. The editors chose the title, so I sometimes have a hard time remembering titles of my own articles. But um, How to Protect Your Children from the P-Word. And it's about pornography addiction. And at the time when I wrote it, I wrote it when my kids were still pretty little. So a lot of the focus of the article was about prevention. It was a lot of about, you guys need to be aware of what's out there. You guys need to be worried. You need to protect your kids. And the analogy I used in the article is that you have to treat the internet like a loaded weapon. That the way you would treat a loaded weapon in your home is the way you treat the internet. And you keep it under lock and key. You don't leave kids alone with it. You know where it is at all times. Anyway, it made it onto a Reddit uh, thread and I, once, I was looking through the comments that people were leaving about the article, and somebody left a comment saying, this lady who wrote this article sounds like she's the worst parent in the world. And what is she planning to do? Follow her kids to college? And that kind of like took me aback. And I, you know, there's a lot that we can learn even from our critics. And I thought about why was that the reaction that this person had to the article? And then there was a whole debate between the commenters under, uh, based on that person's criticism. And what I realized was that that article, so much of the focus was about prevention that it didn't, at that time, the focus, because my kids weren't older, wasn't really about how to navigate it once you are around it. So those of you parents who are here whose kids are teens, it's, I think the time of like making sure they're not using uh, the internet or don't have privacy with it is pretty much over. It's really until age maybe 14 that you can, you can even do that. Uh, the hadith of uh, Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu is just perfect where he said, T uh, play with your children for the first seven years, teach your children for the second seven years, seven to 14, right? And then be their friend for the third seven years, so 14 to 21. And it, it's very true. Whatever you want to teach them, you really have until age 14. After 14, it's pretty much maintenance. You're just maintaining whatever you've taught them. So what I was explaining about our kids when we gave them the smartphones when they graduated from high school, at that point then it was just maintaining the adab of how to interact with one another on social media, what's appropriate, what's inappropriate, what's not good for your heart to look at, to be reflecting about what is it that my eyes are taking in, and how is this affecting me? And the last thing is, I personally will admit that I have a social media addiction problem. So I can lecture my kids all I want, but I'm on my phone a lot, looking at WhatsApp, looking at Facebook, looking at Instagram. Um, so I personally recently made the decision to cut myself off from Facebook and Instagram for 40 days because I was told by a sheikh that Anytime you want to make something part of your nature, you do it for 40 days. And if you can do it for 40 days, it becomes part of your nature, inshallah. And uh, I've been going through ups and downs. I won't lie. It, it's, I, I'm an addict. I'm an addict, and I, I have to admit that. And my kids are seeing me go through that process. My, my son was looking at his Instagram yesterday, and I was like, oh, let me look over his shoulder. And he's like, no, 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 no. You, you cannot be anywhere near this. You're trying to quit this cold turkey. You should not even be glancing at what I'm looking at. But anyway, um, you know, our kids can also learn from our struggles, too. We're, we sometimes focus so much on teaching them and lecturing to them about how they should be, but we also have to look at ourselves, too. Like, what are we looking at all the time, and how are we keeping ourselves busy?